want to welcome all of you to this service on uh, Sunday, September the 27th, the last Sunday of our calendar year. So glad that you could join us, all of you who are plugging into this recording uh, tomorrow. I trust that God will bless you and be with you as you participate with me in this service. I'd like to open with a call to worship. God of creation, shaper of seas and stars, of planets and of the human family, God is here with us always. God born in Bethlehem, crying in a manger, God is here with us always. God, breath of the universe, flickering, dancing in the candle flame, God is here with us always. God, Emmanuel, amongst us, within us. We bring ourselves and our dreams, for we want to be here with you as we worship together. You are the source of life, birth of God within our own experience. Stay with us now in our worship as we worship together. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. Normally at this time, uh, I would be accompanied by Rachel on the piano and we would be joined together in a song, this week probably a carol. But unfortunately, Rachel was unable to join with me today. Uh, some illness at home has prevented her from being here, so I wish them well and blessing and healing. Hopefully next week, when we record the service for the first, first Sunday of the year, Rachel will be with us again. So until then, I will just invite you to join with me in the prayer of confession. Let us pray. Too often, Lord, we have not been prepared to commit ourselves to the hope to which you have called us. And too often we have failed to make the right decisions when faced with difficult times in our lives especially as we think about this past year and all of the ups and downs we have gone through. We look at our church and our world and still see the injustices, the conflicts, and the incredible suffering, both here in Canada and the United States and around the world. Forgive us, Lord, for too easily being part of all of the forces that marginalize the poor and the weak. Lord, in your mercy, Call us back to your place in the struggle for justice and peace. In the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. The good news of the gospel is that in, by faith in Jesus Christ, we have peace with God, forgiveness, and grace. Thanks be to God for this amazing gift. I want to read today a couple of scriptures that I've chosen this morning. Um, these are scriptures from the Old Testament. And the first one is from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 to 13. For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones, and a time to gather stones together, a 
time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to fear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. What gain have the workers from their toil? I have seen the business that God has given to everyone to be busy with. He has made everything suitable for its time. Moreover, he has put a sense of past and future into their minds, yet they cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I know that there is nothing better for them than to be happy and enjoy themselves as long as they live. Moreover, it is God's gift all should eat and drink and take pleasure in all their toil. The second reading comes from Paul's letter to the Galatians, chapter 4, reading from verses 4 through 7. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law so that, they might, that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child, and if a child, then also an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now may the words of my mouth and the thoughts and meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, Lord, our strength, our rock, and our redeemer. Amen. So as we approach the end of this calendar year, 2020, I thought we should just reflect a little bit on what this mean has, what this year has meant for us, what we have gone through, and how we have coped. In Roman mythology, Janus was the god of gates and doors. And here we are at a gateway, one which opens up for us a new year of possibilities and challenge in 2021. It's also a gateway that points back. As we stand at this gateway to a new year, we are challenged to reflect on the year that has passed, as well as to envision what beckons us into the future. So there we have Janus, looking forward and looking back. He was meant in Roman mythology to represent beginnings, this belief comes from the idea that one must emerge through a gate or door before entering into a new place. As a god of beginnings, Janus also lent his name to the first month of the year, January. The god Janus has a distinctive appearance in art, particularly, as he is often depicted with two faces, as you see there, looking in opposite directions backwards and forwards. Some sources claim that the reason Janus was represented in this particular fashion was due to the notion that doors and gates look in two directions, out and in. And in this way, one of the gods' faces can look forward and the other one can look backwards. So we look back on 2020, and also, hopefully in this time together, look a little bit forward as to where we're going. So as I look back on 2020, I think most of us would confess this has been one of the most difficult and challenging years that probably any of us have ever experienced. 
COVID-19 pandemic has changed the lives of so many, in so many ways, the lives of most of us. Many of you have suffered so much, it's difficult to put the year in perspective. With family members in long-term care facilities and in nursing homes that we have been unable to visit for at least six months of this year, this has been a difficult time for families. And this Christmas, we were unable to gather together around the table and eat together, and laugh together, converse with one another as families and friends. We were not able to do that this year. Gail and I spent our Christmas day around a table for ourselves. But we did make turkey and dressing and all the goodies and we put them in different compartments or little holders and we delivered them to our kids. So at least in some sense, we were enjoying Christmas dinner together. For six months in this past year, 2020, we have not been able to meet together here in worship, as is the case again at the end of December of 2020, when the government has once again closed our doors, in a sense, to physical gathering. And so for six months, from mid-March, when we were closed physically to the opening of the building, until the middle of September, when we were able to invite you back again for worship, of course, with strict protocols, as you can see, uh, when you've been here, there's a six feet distance, you can't all sit together, it's all very carefully roped off. Well, here we are again, unable to worship, and here I am again, alone in the sanctuary. So from mid-March until mid-September, I basically recorded my services at my dining room table each week, and we were able to somehow get through that just by recording on my phone. It wasn't ideal, but it was something we had to get used to and I had to learn. And so here we are again in mid-December, forced to record the service without you being here, but you able to join us after online. Now at least, uh, with Rachel or Sandra providing the music, we can record a semblance of a morning service, uh, which will have music as well as sermon and prayers. So this has been a very challenging time for me personally, and I'm sure for the session to adjust to this new reality. But on the other hand, it's also been a year in which I've had to learn new communication skills. By offering a Bible study through Zoom, we did two of these in the past, past year. We did one, I believe, in the late spring, early spring. We did one on Revelation, which over a dozen of us join together each week. And that was a very blessed time for us. Just being able to connect with one another, at least see each other, uh, even if only through a computer screen. And then we offered another one just in the fall of um, the letter to the Philippians from Paul. And that also was a, a great time together. And in 2021, as we look ahead, I'm hoping that we can again join in a Zoom Bible study and I'm hoping we'll engage the, the letter to the Ephesians as our next project. In fact, I have all of the books purchased and ready to give out to you. So yes, 2020 has been challenging, but it's also allowed us the room, I think, to reflect on our life together in creative ways to kind of assess where we are as a congregation and what we need to do to strengthen and to go forward. So here's some of the many ways that I'm thankful for this past year of challenge. I've seen people growing in their faith. I've seen new families joining us in worship. 
and in studies. Seekers and members who found new inspiration through the Alpha program earlier this past year. Renovation projects completed in the hall, um, looking much better and, and more prepared for fellowship and mission in the future. And the willingness of so many in our church to work together, even when the options have been limited for meeting together. And of course, meeting our financial obligations and our challenges in this past year when we weren't meeting here for most of the year. So that's been, those are some of the things I, I'm, I'm celebrating with you as great achievements in the past year and the, and the positives that we can look at. So again, I ask the question, what time is it for this Lamar Presbyterian Church? Ecclesiastes that we read asked us to consider the time. There is a time for everything, it tells us. What time is it for us? What time is it for you in your life? For everything, we're told there is a season, both for the church and for us as individuals. Where are you today? You stand in the age of a new year. What is your vision for yourself and for the community of faith that we belong to? So as I look ahead with you to 2021, my sense is that there are all kinds of possibilities for us in the new year. We have just completed our profile. The search team gathered together weekly every couple of weeks and they have done a marvelous job and produced a really helpful profile that represents West Flamborough very well. So my sense that there is some excitement here in this congregation, anticipation of the future. I have been ministering here at West Flamborough for the last two and a half years, believe it or not. And I have learned to appreciate your deep faith and your love for one another. It's been, it's been a wonderful experience for me to be part of your community of faith. And I can certainly visualize the kind of life bubbling up within, and the spirit bringing life and hope in each one of us as a collective. The faith in which we are rooted is one of resurrection. Ours is a resurrection hope. And I believe that God will continue to lead and inspire you to overcome whatever seem to be the blocks to our growth and our spiritual vitality. I'm more and more convinced the Christian education, the kind of studies, small group studies that we've been engaged in, I'm, I'm really convinced that that's one of the keys to the growth, to the spiritual growth and outreach of a congregation. And of course, prayer, prayer for each other, prayer together. So group studies, education, prayer, I think are keys to our future growth and to strengthening our community. When we read our New Testaments, it's pretty clear, pretty clear what we are, what we are supposed to be about. What is our raison d'etre? Jesus continues to call each one of us down the way of the cross. He continues to challenge us to live out the Sermon on the Mount ethic, love of neighbor and love of self. Certainly, what we believe is important, but equally important is our life together as the light of the world. My sense of you here is that you take seriously this call, the call to be on the side of justice, 
and generosity for the other. We all know that the church has been a, a positive force for good in the history of the, of the world, in Western society. And oh yes, I know it's, it's, uh, it's had its dark side, and one that we dare not neglect or overlook. But today, with all of you, I want us to celebrate the compassionate side of the church, which has produced so much good hospitals, educational institutions, shelters for the poor, the unloved and forgotten in society, and the many expressions of its love and empathy for the needy. This has been the good side of the church, the church that has been so positive and continues to be so in so many places in our world. And I think continues to be West Lambert's role and vision and purpose. So in addition to building up the body of Christ and growing a community of faith, we need to take a real part make a real part of our vision the ministry of compassion to those in our community in 2021. But not just here in West Flamborough, but around the world through PWSMD and Presbyterian Sharing, ministering to the needs of people all over the world. called In Search for the Unchurched. And one of the things emphasized in this study is the difficulty for people to enter the church, to physically get into the building for the very first time. Imagine for a moment what it would be like to come toward our sanctuary out of that big parking lot. You see this building in front of you. You see several entry, entry points, one facing you, another path going around the side, another one going around the other side. None of these entry points scream, welcome. You go around the building, your attention is getting higher, and you discover what might be the door in. Then you step inside, not knowing anyone or even what might happen once you get in. Because you haven't been there before. You haven't been to church, maybe never. And often these same people, if they do have a history of church, have been hurt deeply. And it's taken a great deal of effort for them to get to the door. Once inside, they find that they don't know the unwritten rules. Where are the washrooms? What happens next as they look through the bulletin? When do they stand? When do they sit? It's all foreign to them. And I think it's very easy for a church to slip into ways of handling visitors that may seem unwelcoming to the tents. If church is one of the places where people today are going to connect with God and find this child born of the Jews, we need to be more intentional about making those entry points as user-friendly as possible. It's true that as we have celebrated over this Christmas season, as Isaiah says, that light has come into the world. It's true that, as the story of the wise men confirms, that many are seeking. But we as the Church of Christ in the world, the people of God, need to be alert to our role in communicating and encouraging members and encouraging seekers to find their way to this child born in Bethlehem. This, this ultimately is our reason for existence. As Paul reminds the people in Galatia, 
Christians there, he says, but when in the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. We have been given the mission to reach out to people with good news, to promote faith, to promote healing, to offer forgiveness. Born of Mary, raised in the Jewish faith, sent by God, all so that humanity might be brought back into relationship with God. This, Jesus reminded us, is why he came into the world, to save sinners. God sent his Son in order that we would be brought back into fellowship with God. And ultimately, I believe this is what the human family is looking for and searching for. Will they find what they are looking for? I believe that Jesus is the doorway into genuine self-discovery, forgiveness, and healing. This is what we were inviting people into. Not just a religion, not, just, not to a denomination per se, but into a fellowship of people who have connected with God. It is the doorway that each of us offers others. So let us be a church that welcomes and nurtures and encourages reconciliation and hope for those many seekers after the holy who may have been looking in all different places for this. But finally at last, they find us, they find you, and you open to them a, a whole new way of resolving that search that has really occupied them without them being fully conscious of it, of what they've been looking for, which ultimately for each one of us is to be in relationship with God again what we were created to be. So thanks be to God for this gift that we have as a congregation that in 2021 we can reach out individually and as a congregation for, for the many who are searching and that we might grow in our faith and in our connection to God and one another. In the name of Christ, join together in our prayers. God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, of Rebekah and all the prophets, and of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we come to you with faith and hope and trust, thanking you for the year that has passed with all of its challenges and difficulties, sickness, isolation, financial difficulty, loss of jobs, the whole range of things that have faced us this past year. Even congregations like ours who have not been able to meet together, but in your love and grace, we have found ways to connect with one another and found ways that we continue to proclaim the good news that 
Christ has come to save us, to redeem us, to buy us back. That at the proper time you came into the world, when it was the most propitious time for you to come. So we thank you for that we have gone through this wonderful Christmas season together, been able to worship together, to light the candles of Advent together, and to proclaim good news together that Christ was born in Bethlehem for us, as the angels declare. So thank you for this past year, for all the ways in which we have grown, for all the ways in which we have been led, for the ways you have guided us as a congregation through the session, through the interim moderator, and through the search team that have met, and through the study groups that have met, and for the, the people who look after the building and the finances. We thank you for all of them. For Barbara, who does the financial uh, affairs of the church. Thank you for all their gifts and their dedication to you. And as we look forward, Lord, into the new year, 2021. We anticipate once again your presence with us because you have promised to be with us even to the very end of the world. So let us be conscious and hopeful that you indeed, God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, just as you led your patriarchs, just as you led your people out of Egypt to the promised land, that you too will guide us and lead us to the place where you want us to be, as a congregation and as individuals. We continue to pray for those who have been suffering from illness and from different challenges in their lives. We continue to pray for Walter and Margaret Reed. We continue to pray for those who have lost loved ones, like Gwen, who lost her husband, uh, Woody Thompson. Be with them and the family, especially at this Christmas time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers as we offer them to you now. In the name of Jesus, in the silence we bring the prayers that are upon our hearts. Christ our Lord, who gave himself for us, and who continues to walk with us. Amen. And now may the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Rebecca, and Sarah, and all the prophets, be with you today 